scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever. Our Father, which art in heaven, then hallowed be your name. Approach him with confidence but with reverence. Verse 10. I'd like us to read it together. One, two, read. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. One more time. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as So now Jesus is teaching, not a prophet, not an apostle. The word himself, the logos of God, the intelligence of God is speaking. Are we together now? And then he says, when you approach God in prayer this is the sequence now let me tell you something truth in itself does not benefit the power of truth is in its sequential arrangement truth randomly communicated may only provide potentials for freedom but not bring freedom in reality are we together it matters not what not that you know but how the sequence there is something you need to know about god before you know he blesses if you know god blesses before that information you become a fool and the prosperity that comes will destroy you so there is a foundation there is a sequence to the knowledge of god are we together now that means that you are not at liberty to just randomly pick any truth. No, we build according to pattern. There is a way God wants to be known. Are we together tonight? And so he's teaching here that God has priorities. Now remember, everything captured in the Lord's prayer is important. But he's showing you the sequence. He's showing you how to attract the attention of the Father that the acknowledgement that God is the source and the sustainer of all things does something to him because consistently there are contentions in the earth as to who is the Lord your situation will try to claim lordship so when you approach him and say Abba I am still convinced you are source sustainer I had a threat letter from my office today, but in spite of it, I will never be confused about who owns the earth. Everyone is a tenant. The earth is the Lord. So I approach him. Listen, when I call him Abba, it does something to him. It puts pressure on his integrity. Jesus is teaching here. Pray in this manner let this be the construction of your understanding that the one who i am coming to was not voted into power the one who i am coming to he does not dwell in eternity eternity is also time it's just time that is infinite the bible says he dwells in a realm of unapproachable light eternity is a subset of his domain so when you approach him abba Abba, Abba, the one who has no beginning and no end. Then he says, who art in heaven? Then he says, hallowed be your name. That means I approach you with confidence, 
but I also approach you with reverence. Are we together now? Then the very next request, listen, he says, thy kingdom come. Notice, your needs have not come into the picture yet. This is the sequence. In order of priority, your kingdom come. The word kingdom means the the jurisdiction of the influence of a king that means that when you say your kingdom comes that means i desire to see my territory under the influence of your government the kingdom of god is everywhere god created the lake of fire the earth under the earth everywhere god created is his kingdom but the kingdom of heaven is that portion of the kingdom of god where his value system and his culture experientially has been allowed to find expression are we together now if you're with me say amen, amen. so jesus is teaching here and he's saying your needs will be met but your needs are a symptom of something bigger the absence of the influence of a government within your territory is what continues to invent several needs that means that you will not even need to ask certain things when this is remedied so the problem is not poverty the problem is not witchcraft the problem is not lack of progress the problem is not wickedness the problem is that there is the absence of the influence of the government of God represented by the Christ that a territory has not yet experienced that reality and so he says to solve your problem long term approach God this way your kingdom come and then he tells you how the kingdom should come still in the same verse by your will being done the only way his kingdom comes is when his will the word will there is the word testament is the word intention the same root word use word logos the thoughts of a man that cries out for expression that there's something within your heart according to your predeterminate counsel let that which is within you find expression your kingdom comes when your will is done and then he never said on earth in earth not on earth in earth this portion of earth called joshua selman this is where the assignment will not just the physical territory this portion of earth is crying out for a dimension of your influence because when my life comes under that influence and when my life becomes a testament of your will then in experience there are many earths around but they can be distinguished by which portion of earth has allowed his influence Please sit down, sit down. This, this is a Bible study. This is a midweek service. Let's... Jesus is teaching us how to pray. So your kingdom, I desire your influence, the extent of your power, your culture, your governance, the dexterity of your intelligence. Let it find expression upon this piece of earth. Are we together? Yes. The first domain that the kingdom of God seeks to find expression in is not the physical territory. It's not even the socio-economic territory. You have to understand that in the design, the creation of the earth, man was the epicenter of God's creativity. Are we together? That all things were made with man in view. Are we together now yes that means that the object of god's desire 
it's not plants it's not animals it's not oil it's man no wonder the psalmist said what is man i consider the works of your hands i see the artistry invested in making them what they are yet what is man that you are mindful of nor the son of man that thou visitest him he says you have made him a little lower than elohim you have crowned him with glory and honor you have set him above the works of your hands and in doing that you did not leave anything that was not under his feet what is man that you cannot create another species what is man that he will reject you and you will still declare your vulnerability and chase him back what is man that you are not ashamed to show you are vulnerable towards what did you put in this entity did you lose your creativity when you created him couldn't you make another one what is man jesus is teaching here the mentor jesus is raising men who would have understanding and he says that your kingdom come and your will be done are we together in earth as it is in heaven that means my focus should not really be the kingdom my focus should be the will because the way the kingdom comes if i can find his will and how to get his will done are, are we together now yes colossians chapter 1 and verse 9 please goodness let's work with time colossians chapter 1 and verse 9 paul is speaking in Colossae. he's mentoring the believers and he's teaching them something very powerful he's showing them the boundaries of their understanding he wants he wants to teach them he wants them to understand certain things and he says for this cause we also since the day we heard it do not cease to pray for you it says that you may and to desire that you may be filled with help me please the knowledge of his will the knowledge of his will it can be known you can be filled with it the knowledge of his will and then all wisdom and then spiritual understanding hallelujah that means i can know the degree to which the kingdom has come in my life by how scarce my prayer requests become if my prayer requests continue they continue to reveal to me like a symptom that the reality of the influence the government of the christ in experience has not found expression the proof that i am growing is that my prayer life should increase while my prayer requests reduce so that it reduces to a point where all that is left is worship that you have blessed me in all things your will has has sorted out the various levels in my life and i have nothing else when i come before you i search all around and i see that your there has been a superimposition of your kingdom that your government is that powerful to sort out every area of my life and only leave me with a desire to know you more not to get things done are we blessed so jesus is teaching my kingdom come leave the land leave the water face this earth the mismanagement of the territory is a reflection of the problem with this piece of earth so the project starts with this piece of earth called man if i can change me and i can allow the will of god to be superimposed upon my life then i can extend that influence to every territory are we together this is god's theology this is how he mentors believers and any other approach that is not in sync with this will only continue to frustrate believers this might be the reason why many well-meaning sincere believers are frustrated frustrated again and again because there are gaps 
in our spiritual understanding but let's listen to the mentor Jesus the living logos of God that his will brings his kingdom never forget this the kingdom does not come just by prayer the kingdom comes when his will that means prayer aside from changing you empowers you to know and do and bring his will to your life so that when his will comes to your life then there will be a revelation in experience of his kingdom are we together the will of God then the Bible goes further to let us know that the will of God is not a mystery please someone say the will of God is not a mystery that means there has been a technology given to the believer by which we can know the will of God number one he says in Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11 a revelation of his will according to the consistency of his character being the same yesterday today and forever he says I know the thoughts that I think towards you you don't know them but let me give you a picture so you are not in confusion they are thoughts of good you may not know the details but be sure that whatever it is it is good thoughts of good and not of evil and that these thoughts were constructed to ensure that you have an expected end so you may not know the nitty gritties but this is sufficient that the thoughts that I think towards you they are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end are we together then scattered all through scripture by the spirit of grace are various revelations of the will of God I wish above all things that ye prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers i will restore to you the years that the canker worm all through scripture is like is like is like a compendium of the will of god unveiled by the spirit so that as i study my bible i'm not just trying to be spiritual i'm exploring the vastness of the will of god are we together remember the degree to which his will comes that is the degree to which his kingdom too manifests so not knowing his will can rob my life of allowing the experience of his influence to be seen the difference between two believers therefore is not the law of God has for them there is one Lord one faith one baptism the degree to which through the sacrifice of understanding and alignment we have been able to capture the will of God in various dimensions and so the stars begin to differ from themselves that even among the stars one differed from another in glory the effulgence of the glory the power the grace of God revealed in and through a man is a reflection of how much of the will of God has found expression in that man's heart and how much of his kingdom has found expression Is God blessing us? God designed man to be a spirit. Now, I've heard all kinds of teachings, and I don't mean to be controversial, but I've heard all kinds of teachings that man is a spirit, is a soul, is a body. That is correct, but that is wrong man is a spirit that spirit lives in a body but the spirit and the body interface from two different realms and there is no basis for compatibility so the spirit living in a body is useless so god created a faculty that connects a faculty that operates a system of duality that can allow the body benefit from it and the spirit benefit from it and he called it a mind are we together the presence of that mind with your spirit is what makes a soul please listen very carefully 
so it, you are right when you say man is a soul in that that spirit now has a system of communicating with the body but there are no three entities like you can divide them and put spirit here put stole here put body it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense it's because most people don't study their bibles it doesn't make sense man is a spirit when jesus was about to give up the ghost he said father into your hands i commend my spirit the spirit left and all that was left there was the case are we together so man is a spirit that spirit lives in a body and interfaces with a faculty that allows for expression it is dual in its operation that means i can by that faculty interact with my physical environment and still tap into the advantage of the realm of the spirit he called it a mind and then he put certain things and and compartmentalized it into the will as we know emotions and intellect are we together because we're talking will here so now we're coming back to the realm of the mind that the will of god is really executed in the realm of the mind This is very powerful i say this because of what i'm about to show you it's very important most believers do not pay attention to this this unique operation by regeneration that excellent work of the spirit has happened with us the bible says he that is joined to christ is one spirit are we together now this body continues because this body does not have a life of its own it depends on what flows from the spirit and the dexterity of the mind that is why when both faculties leave this body it's dead are we together now yes if this body falls you don't call the body joshua selman the body was the case the f that carried joshua selman i don't know if you're with me very important the subject of the will of God being done in our lives is something that we must understand thoroughly if we truly not only want to become agents of national transformation if we want to remedy the socio-economic ills and then be able to present ourselves as a portrait that becomes a desire of nations our approach to Christianity and our approach to the faith life that is full of many gaps about God and the way he approaches is unattractive to today's world because there is no synergy in that understanding. Christianity looks like a nuisance because of a, an aberrated theology about God and how the saints should respond to God. The will of God at work in a man. Are we together? Yes. The system, please listen, the system by which people receive the will of God is called transformation. Write it down, please. Transformation is a system. A system by which people can embrace the will of God. That means when you engage in transformation, it's like you are saying, Maranatha, come. I'm calling the reality of your person and your influence transformation Romans chapter 12 please we'll read verse 1 and 2 particularly verse 2 Romans chapter 1 let me quote it for time's sake it says I beseech thee brethren by the mercies of God that ye offer your bodies are we together a living sacrifice unto God holy and acceptable and then it calls it your reasonable act of worship let's go to verse 2 it says and be not conformed to this world is the greek word aeon it means the thinking pattern the mindset the approach that comes with this cosmos and then it says but be ye transformed that's the same word where you get the word metamorphosis like an insect will continue to transform from egg lava pupa and adult it says be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind and then it says so that you can prove that which 
um, that we, um, you, you can prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. For many years, I did not understand what this scripture said. To prove God's will through transformation, through renewal. The word proof there does not necessarily mean um, validate alone. To prove is, is a very serious statement. God is saying engage in transformation and renewal and let your life be a system of vetting and defense whether or not your life whether you will not see that good acceptable and perfect will of God find expression in your life that you prove the will of God prove me this day he says do this that means be transformed and see if the potential of the kingdom does not manifest are you getting the point now so you prove god you prove the extent of his majesty the power that resides in his kingdom by transformation prove me not just by crying out thy will be done allow this system of reception called transformation is more than a system of change it's a system of reception so that when you engage in transformation is a way of saying lord i am prepared for your will to be done in my life and for your kingdom to come everyone who engaged in transformation dreaming with god walking with god allowing his intelligence and his faculties of expression to come under the influence of god's intelligence they are the people whose lives were recorded here as men who the earth was not worthy of ordinary men who were subject to this system of reception called transformation and their lives changed transformation is very important the moment a believer is joined to Christ in the new birth the next ministry of the Holy Spirit is the ministry of transformation to be able to create the vessels that will now take the oil the oil remains small because the vessel carrying it was small and the prophet said I know what the problem is go and borrow vessels borrow not a few stretch your understanding from border to border and then the oil began to multiply our possibilities are a reflection of our degrees of transformation not a reflection of God's might not a reflection of God's power the multifaceted potentials that are resident in the Christ are limited by a mind that is small very quickly before we pray there are indices that measure transformation this is where transformation is not something you just say i am transformed no there are indices i can know it can be seen by heaven by earth and all the powers of hell that means that i don't need to ask you are you transformed i need to just search for the indices if i do not find them you are not transformed are we together i'm going to give us three and very quickly we pray and i will start from the least to the greatest are we together so i will start from number three number two and then number one Let's start from number three. I know you are transformed by your degree of spiritual enlightenment. Please write it down. The third, or I would, I don't know if I'll call it first or third now. I'm sure you understand what I'm trying to say. Yes. Spiritual enlightenment. What does that mean? A thorough comprehension of the ways and the methodologies of God that means that I come to a point where by the agency of the spirit and the word I come into an exact knowledge please look at me a precious people of God there is an exact body of truth allocated for the victory of the saints that means there is a boundary of truth that the saints must access to manifest in a certain way the truths are not random the Bible calls them marvelous light 
it is our encounter with that marvelous light that makes us in experience a chosen generation a royal priesthood a peculiar people we are peculiar because of the unusual access a body of spiritual information has been prepared for a generation to come into the bible calls it marvelous light light i search for light in your life as proof of transformation light light spiritual enlightenment job chapter 29 my goodness we we'll read from verse 1 to 10 job was a man whose life still to, to, till today the life of job continues to baffle people the level of excellence the level of power forget about what happened later on job was a strange man 29 verse 1 we we'll read the first 10 verses i love job moreover job continued his parable and said verse 2 oh that i were in the days of my the months pass as in the days when god what preserved me verse 3 read together if you are a christian one to read when his candle shine upon stop where did it shine not upon my path not upon my path there is a light that shines on your path but there is a light that shines on your head are you aware of the one that shines on your head hmm. when his candle shined upon my head and when by his light i walked through darkness two kinds of light there is one that was at work on my head then one i walked on my path the saints know the one for your path but we do not know the ones for our heads verse 4 as i was in the days of my youth this is job now showing you the secrets behind his life of wonder he says when the secrets of god were upon my tabernacle what did they produce let's begin to read now the chronicles of the wonders of light he says when the almighty was yet with me when my children were about me next verse we're reading to verse 10 when i washed my talk to me please and the rock poured out rivers of oil next verse we're reading together keep reading when i prepared my seat uh-huh verse eight the young men saw me and hid themselves what a man what a body the young men saw me i didn't look like a man again the light upon my head turned me into something else that was not pure human the young men saw me and the only way they could relate with this transformation and the experience of the kingdom upon this piece of earth was to run away there is a dimension of transformation that men can no longer talk they will run what is this It says the aged arose and stood up. Elders don't stand. In heaven, elders don't, they only bow to worship the king until then they are seated. Whatever will make an elder stand must be divine. Let's finish up. Verse 9. The princes, even though they were trained, refrained from talking. I spoke from the standpoint of that intelligence and there was no longer any basis for argument no contribution no argument it says they laid their hands on their mouth demonstrate that to yourself and see what it looks like that you watch a man and the only thing you can do silence is not enough you add your hand to ensure your mouth does not speak what kind of man is this please understand what i'm saying thy kingdom come 
that an interaction can happen between man and God that turns the man into God. Verse 10. The nobles held their peace and their tongue cleaved to the roof of their mouth. So I can look at your life and know the degree to which you are transformed by the excellence of the light, the spiritual illumination, the dexterity of your understanding the ways of God, not just sermons, not just scripture. I look at the sequence of your arranging truth. I look at the flawlessness of your execution. It is proof that you are transformed. Every possibility in the kingdom is governed by a body of light. Two people can go through the same situation and their future is at the mercy of the spiritual illumination they understand. Not the love of God. Not the will of God. Already it's clear that I know the thoughts I think towards you. You as every man. You define your future by your extent of transformation. The degree to which you have attracted his will. Knowledge. Not random knowledge. The body of truth allocated for the results you desire. If I'm hungry, I don't need water. Water is not bad. But that situation requires another system. If I'm hungry, I don't need a drink. In this kingdom, just because you are looking does not mean you are seeing. There is a grace. I hope you know that you don't see with your eyes. You see with your mind. Your eyes only give what your mind has seen expression. Ephesians chapter 3. We have to hurry up and pray, my God. Ephesians chapter 3. We'll read from verse 9 and 10. Paul is teaching in Ephesus and he's, he's communicating the basis of his apostleship and then the mandate allocated to him. He says, and to make all men see. To make all men see. What is the fellowship of the mystery? I didn't just learn it. I was brought like an occult. I was initiated into a body of truth. He calls it fellowship. A dimension of truth that you have not just by learning but by becoming I was called initiated into a body of spiritual understanding and that I've been mandated by that grace to make all men see a man can carry a grace that will make men see that whilst you are seated regardless of the 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 hardness of the heart when that grace is introduced to your situation suddenly you see you will see Habakkuk chapter 2 Habakkuk said I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower that I will see what the Lord will say he will say it but I will not hear it I will see it I can doubt what I hear but I cannot doubt what I see Is God speaking to us tonight? We must covet the grace that can cause men to see. There was a well, there was an oasis in the desert, but Hagar could not see it. It was there. She was dying of thirst until the angel of the Lord appeared and showed her. There was a lamb, but Abraham could not see it until he was shown he saw a lamb the same way there is a door but you are not seeing it and it looks like you are locked up alone ah my god who is god speaking to that there is a door god told you abuja is a closed room do you not know that there are doors there is a door there is a door that leads to wealth there is a door that leads to restoration Please hear me. There is a door that leads to increase. There is a door that leads to honor. There is a door that leads to influence. They are not random doors. But the doors are seen. Your eyes must see it. This 
kingdom is a compendium of infinite possibilities only limited by the power of the king that owns the kingdom but those possibilities are limited by the sight and the light that we have god made many lights but there were two great lights one to rule in the day the light that rules in the day is not the light that rules in the night you can have the one for the day but when the night time comes you need another kind of light if i were you i would pray in tongues for one minute this this has to sink upon my spirit the light he made many lights hallelujah please sit down we're going to find somewhere to pray transformation so when a husband and his wife continue to fight that marriage is not allowing the influence of God to find expression and usually what they are going to check is whether they were the will of God or not whether they were the will of God or not the marriage will still not work until that level of reception through transformation and the key is to go back to the Word of God and find out what God said he says husbands if you are not a husband pass that verse but he says husbands love your wives not the way you want he knows the way you want is very it vacillates so he first separates you from your feeling and says as christ love the church if you understood that scripture you should start crying because no man can love a woman like that it is not given to a man to love his wife as christ loves the church there are many things that that statement alone will cancel out of your marriage number one that true love can never be a reward you cannot reward someone with love the saints were not rewarded with salvation you see how difficult it is so the kind of hair she makes or doesn't make has nothing to do with it where do you then keep your emotions you see how hard it is that verse is supposed to make you go back and say god how do i do it the fact that you did not ask him is proof you did not understand the scripture as christ loved the church go and read the halotry and the rebellion of the church i have loved thee with an everlasting love and i have drawn you with my loving kindness i'm not ashamed to be vulnerable i am god but let heaven say whatever i will still come for you and he says love her that way so before you love her that way you have to get the mind of the person whose model was given to you so the bible says let this mind be in you as a marriage requirement or not just let it be in you which was also in Christ Jesus that although he was God he thought it not robbery and he came and not only died died a controversial death so marriage for you becomes a project between you and your wife to outdo loving one another never expecting reception now this is dangerous this is not a marriage seminar i don't want to get into trouble but let me tell you sincerely if it is heaven you are looking for it is at the mercy of the will of god the will of god is not negotiable it is received through transformation transformation is your way of repentance that means you compare your life with god's standards and you repent it's not for sinners it is how the saints are perfected through repentance Are we together? Yes. Light. Pastor, you know, truly my greatest prayer for the church is that we stop the empty boast that comes from unarranged truths. 
there are vast truths that are scattered and randomly arranged so when we have a challenge we don't know what spiritual law is responsible for the outcome we desire we try the blood of Jesus, we try the fire of the Holy Ghost, we try communion, we try oil, we try touching and agreeing, we just manipulate principles at random and it is dangerous to receive results under that condition because you will be afraid of your result knowing that you were not sure which one brought it. One day life will not give you enough time to try. You will need the word to work with quintessence, with accuracy with precision mm. and jesus himself knew what to do he knew what to engage when they met him with five loaves and two fish he said no problem in the economy of heaven there is provision for this possibility imagine that he told the boy let's try this say, okay return back um what do i try now father help me no there is a level of perfection that the saints must get into this is true Please pay attention. Listen. You will... Now, I don't mean to insult you. Please don't, don't feel bad. I, I preach from a heart of love. I hope you understand what I'm saying. You can stand and be angry and say, Abuja has not opened up for me. You try night vigil. You pray. You take communion. Let me tell you, there is an exact body of knowledge that is allocated for a territory opening up for a man. You can do everything without that and never move. This is why we are angry when we see ease in the life of others. Because we vet their ease versus our frustration. And then versus the non-result that we have and gets us angry. You have to pray and say, Lord, bring me to a level of spiritual accuracy. Was it not Paul that said that we walk circumspectly as wise and the reason why we should walk circumspectly is that you don't always have the time. It's an issue of time. And Paul is saying, you may have had time, but one day you will be constrained by time and you will need accuracy. You raised a child and did not know how to raise that child. And you spent five years looking for how to correct the child. And he's saying, learn what it takes to raise a child fast. One day you may not have the luxury of five years to remedy it. Transformation through enlightenment. Let me give us the second. The second index. I know you are transformed. I know you are aligned to God's will. And I know the kingdom is about to find expression experientially when I see virtue in your life. Higher than knowledge is virtue. Please write it down. Virtue is a measure of your closeness to the character of Christ. A measure of how close you are in experience to the character of the Christ is called virtue. In the hierarchy of spiritual things, virtue is higher than knowledge. As powerful as it is. Colossians chapter 3, we'll read 8 to 13. Just one scripture. We call it many things. We call it the fruit of the spirit. We call it character. We call it whatever it is. But the Bible calls it virtue. It says, but now put off these. Anger. Look up, please, believers. Do you know how many people get sick just because they, they disobey this scripture? Anger. Wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. We're reading verse, yes, next verse. To 13. Lie not to one another. It's cheaper to tell the truth, he's saying. Seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, verse 10, and have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that has created him. We're reading to 13. Where there is neither Greek nor this nor that. Let's go to 12, verse 12. Put on therefore, please look up, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, the bowels of mercies, kindness, 
humbleness of mind, meekness, patience, which is long suffering. The last verse forbearing one another and forgiving one another he says if any man have a quarrel against any even as christ forgave you so also do ye now he's teaching believers virtue that i can look at you and i know how transformed you are when i cannot trace a physical territory to you again i shouldn't look at you and say you are behaving like an evil man you are behaving like a Yoruba man. You are behaving like a northern man. If I can still associate you to the limitation of your territory, you are not transformed. I should be confused as to where you come from because you have adopted the value system of another culture that superimposes the limitations. They're always angry. Where are you from? And then I, I chanted that as you are concurrently as you are mentioning the place I'm, it's not word of knowledge I mean just the betrayal where there is no more Greek there is no Jew are we together we've all come into another culture please listen to me this is very powerful we're discussing a bit of this with pastor while we're on our way coming and we're talking about the limitations, very unhealthy dimensions, limitations that are associated with our territories that will never allow us to rise, to become global in, sp in scope and to do things that will bring glory to the name of the Lord. Loyalty to ordinances that do not represent the character of the Christ. You are at liberty to remain there. But if it is the kingdom you want, Jesus is saying your will be done. So where you come from when you are angry, the only person who stops you is God. But then you come under another government and they look at you and say, ah, something has changed. Don't say, we are like that. Even God knows we are all like that. My father is an angry man. My forget, I'm a prayer warrior. Yes, I agree. But huh, when you annoy me and that lion in me, that's not a lion. No, no, no. The lion of Judah does not behave foolishly. Even the lions at the den of, of Nebuchadnezzar behave themselves wisely when a transformed man entered in. Turn to your neighbor and prophesy. Say, no excuses please someone else no excuses now prophesy to yourself no excuses no excuses we're irresponsible because of where we come from we are like that in fact i'm more responsible than every no 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 i have come to a point where my life becomes an effulgence that the Jesus who cannot be seen should be seen in my life. You, you see, let me tell you how it works. Not everybody has to see the burning bush. One person looks at the burning bush and the rest look at the person who saw the burning bush. Moses alone saw the burning bush. And then he told the rest, just look at me. And have the burning bush experience by looking at me. Everybody say virtue say character that you can see a billion naira and walk away if it will compromise on your integrity it's not about trying if that reality is not at work in you it does not look real are we together yes it's a midweek service you should receive something and go back with it you can check your life now and know your degree of transformation. It's not longevity in church. These are the indices. If I cannot see Christ, the Bible says my little children, Paul is teaching here, whom I travail until Christ. There is a formation of Christ that I must see in your life. I should be able to see patience. I should be able to see long suffering. I should be able to see goodness, the aptness to bring smiles upon people's face. 
is not a gift. You press through desire and that sacrifice of alignment. Are we together? Yes. Cultured life. You don't pick a call and shout, ah, call me, call me, call me, call me, Nigeria. And you just off it. I'm in Nigeria, call me. No. No. Your life, your communications have come under the influence of the spirit. You are cautious. You speak to people like human beings, not animals. It has nothing to do with being a CEO. It has nothing to do with being a preacher. It has everything to do with being an ambassador, a testifier, one who has proven, he has tasted and seen that the Lord is good. When you do something wrong, you say, I'm sorry. Don't say everybody does it. Is it just... People are kind and nice to you. You say thank you. The kingdom. Are, are we blessed now? We're going to pray. Apologize, my time is up. Virtue. Let me tell you this. When knowledge and virtue run a sprint, knowledge will win. But when knowledge and virtue run a marathon, virtue will win think very carefully as I repeat myself when knowledge and virtue run a sprint knowledge will win but when knowledge and virtue when they run a marathon knowledge will be tired while virtue continues that means the secret really to your sustaining impact will not because the body of truth that you need to learn they are limited you can exhaust them what will keep you going is the dexterity nobody saw Jesus Christ in glory and rejected him no even Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and said Rabbi forget about what we do in the day we know that you are a man sent from God for no man can do these things except God be with him can someone look at your life today in experience and write more sermons with your life than your preaching can someone look at your life today and write more sermons from your life than your books I forgot to do my devotion this morning and while I'm late at work, I see a Bible that continues what I would have been doing in the room. Personified in a man. The flawlessness of your virtue. I can read Galatians from your life. While I'm looking at you, I'm reading Colossians. This man has put on Christ. I no longer feel guilty that I did not meet with God in the room. Because I'm meeting with him now. The kingdom has come. The Bible was never supposed to remain in the room. It was never even supposed to remain in your head. You are supposed to be a living epistle. Let me give us the last one we have to pray. The highest in the cadre of spiritual things, the zenith of transformation is love. Higher than knowledge, higher than character, love don't get emotional because what I'm saying about to say is very serious and charismatic you know every time you talk of love people just go back to February in their minds I mean you stay on July I'm telling you because what you're about to hear is not Valentine at all love prophesy say love first Corinthians chapter 12 we'll read 31 please spare me five minutes and then we're done 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 31. Now, Paul in chapter 12 was talking about the gifts of the Spirit, the charismatic gifts that we all desire, that brought some of you for this meeting right now. Wanting fire from heaven like Elijah. Wanting the grace to prophesy and to move mountains. Are we together now? 
wanting the ability to dissect people here and there, the healing anointing to lift people at will out of the wheelchair. And that's wonderful. But when Paul was done with all of these things, he said, but covet earnestly the best gifts. And then he says, and yet, and yet to prophecy, and yet to miracles, and yet to signs and wonders, and yet to word of knowledge, and yet to discerning of spirits, I show you a more excellent. I see 2G. Congratulations. 3G, your network, and yet 4G. And while you're about to relax, and yet I show you Whatever is a more excellent way should be meticulously studied. Then he goes to chapter 13 and verse 1. Please give it to us. 13. I'll just read 1, 2 and then you jump with me please to 8. Boy, I wish I had time. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and I have not love. You know, when he says charity here, don't think an orphanage. It's just, it's just King James and his play of words. Love. Agape. Love that only God can bring. It does not exist in the world of men by themselves. Does not come through reproduction. Cannot come that way. It comes from heaven. That God himself the bread of life, love. It was that love that was demonstrated in the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ. Love, greater love, had no man than this, that a man gave his life for his friend. Are we together? He said, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and I have not charity, I am become as a sounding brass. You have to understand how the spirit marks the scripts of men. That this is a sounding brass. If I speak with both tongues of men and of angels, I mean that in itself I should... You would, you would give me some kind of ranking in our territory that... that and yet in the realm of the spirit, it says you don't amount to much. Verse 2 and then we'll go to 8. Verse 2 please. And though I have the gift of prophecy, the Bible says despise not prophesying. It has power. But though I have that gift, and then I understand all mysteries. Show me that man. There is no man like that. The same mysteries you stood up for. The Bible says even if you understand it, and then he says, I have all knowledge and all faith. Show me that man. He should be ruling the world as a person. He should become the monarch of the universe. This is the qualification. And yet in the midst of it, he says, so that I can move mountains. If I do not have love, I weigh small in the realm of the spirit. Now let me show you a mystery. Verse 8a. Powerful revelation that changed my life. Love never fails. I wish you get me the version that says love. That charity is not really expressing it the way I want it to get to you. Any version that says love never fails. Please look up. How many of you hate failure? Let me just see your hand. You really hate it. If you hate it, seriously raise two hands. Now, Drop it down. Thank you so much. Businessmen, were you ever told that there is a way to not fail? The Bible is showing you something that does not fail. If I brought you a product and I said this product does not fail, there's no price I can place on it. And yet the Bible says love never, not love is powerful uh -uh. love never there is no possibility of failure 
Do you know what that means? That means anything that is on his way failing, add love to it. The equation will change. Love never fails. Salt never leaves food tasteless. Never. Never. So when your food is tasteless, even if it's a baby that sprinkles salt, it will change everything. Here he's telling you, that means the way to not fail is to add love to everything I'm doing. That real estate plus love, not as emotions, love from heaven never fails. Love. I must find out because I hate failure. And here the Bible is telling me something that never fails. Ministry plus love then never fails. Influence plus love never fails. Finances plus love never fails. Failure plus love never fails. Because with love, all things are possible. Did your Bible not say so? <laughs> God is love. So the Bible says when you introduce love to anything, Please listen, we're about to pray. Every time we talk about love, people just think very feminine of it. Or they think just in terms of relationships. Men like faith. Because there are many mountains in our lives. But the Bible says in John chapter 13, 34 to 35, that will be our last verse tonight. John chapter 13 from verse 34 to 35. Okay, let's walk with this version. Amplified says, I am giving you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. So you are to love one another. 35. Let's read it together. By this shall all men know stop 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 love can educate a man that love can become a lecturer and teach men something by this all men can know that you are my disciples that means you can validate my mentorship upon your life not just by excelling in knowledge you can prove that you were mentored by me when you have love one for another. I understand having love towards me because I am God. But when you love a man sincerely, truthfully, unbiasedly, not love as an investment, it is not human to manifest that. So that we can disciple nations and teach them. Not just by talking, but by walking in love. Even medical people are finding out now the power of love. The therapeutic power of love. Love is very powerful. It takes a lot of energy to hate. It takes a lot of energy to be in bitterness. I tell you why many people do not walk in the anointing. It's not because they do not fast. I tell you this by experience. You will never sustainably walk in the power of God until the love of God is furnished in you. I tell you why miracles do not happen in the hands of many people. I tell you why many preachers cannot be trusted with membership. They have grace. They have intelligence. They have knowledge. They even have character. 
But this that the Bible calls priceless, the bond of perfectness, the more excellent way of revealing his kingdom, love. My greatest desire is not for you to remember me as one who has revelation, not even as a miracle worker, not even as one who prophesies, not even as a worshiper. The greatest testimony is that this man is truly a lover of God and a lover of men. Not rich men. Not educated men. Not poor men. Not tribesmen. Men. House on the Rock, Jesus taught us to pray. This is what it means to pray. To pray is not to form a circle. To pray is to be transformed. If your prayer does not transform you, you did not pray. If all your prayer does is to bring requests, you are still not changed. The primary assignment of prayer is to change you. When you are changed, the needs will change. When you are changed, the troubles will change. Are we together? We're going to pray. My time is up. I know that there are many of us here who are sick. Some of you came here broken. Some of you came here just wondering, God, is this how the year will end? Is this how my life will be? No job, no breakthrough. Yet, I'm intelligent, you say. I've shown you. The least way to measure transformation is knowledge. As powerful as it is. Followed by character. Please ask any wealthy man you know. They get to certain levels where they are looking for people who have character. Not intelligence. They will trust their estate. They will build their businesses with intelligent people but preserve it with men of character. So at best, is that you will be a builder, but preservers are not just men of intelligence. They are men of character. Add to your CV spiritual understanding. Add to your spiritual understanding virtue. Add to virtue love submit all of them together and watch God prove his will are we together bring to the table your value whatever it is that you do your product and services add to it spiritual understanding add to that contract character add to that character love submit it no man has sustained the ability to reject this. You have been sending your contract alone. You have been sending your CV alone. You have been sending everything you do alone. I'm introducing these tripartite forces. Spiritual illumination. Character. And the bond of perfectness. I continue to pray as a man of God and cry to God and say, Lord, help me to love people. When you love people, they will listen to you. When you love people, no matter how you rebuke them, they will listen to you. When you love people, they will excuse your weaknesses again and again. They will find both legitimate and illegitimate reasons why they should continue to trust you. Love is powerful. Look at what love did on the cross. We're about to pray. I want to introduce love to your life. I want to introduce the power that flows from love. And you will watch an infirmity disappear. And you will watch favor come to you in a way that looks like you held a charm. 
Please hear me, brothers and sisters. I believe that God orchestrated this meeting because it's time to shift someone. These are the dimensions of the kingdom. The Bible says we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. When you know these things I teach you, you will play life like a chess. And those who spectate will only wonder what continues to lift you. Show me a man that knows this. I show you a man whose end you will never see. I show you a man who will live like Satan does not exist. I show you a man who you will continue to find reasons for his lifting and only be left in frustration. These are the keys of the kingdom. House on the Rock, I truly believe that this night, I'm, and I'm not just, I'm, I'm, I'm careful with my words, that this is the beginning tonight of a real defining moment for someone. That someone will leave this place this night and go back home, shut down your television and sit down and say, Lord, what do I need to know to get out of this place? I'm tired of roaming around and escorting people. I'm a man of God, but people are even doubting whether I'm saved. Not talk. I mean, uh, my salvation is still in question. Show me something. God will open your eyes to see the forces of greatness. He will tell you every door continues to close in your life because of dishonor. Correct it. And you will swing every open door. He will show you that I can restore. It's been 20 years of a wasted life. God says it doesn't matter. In my economy, there is power to manipulate time. I can take everything in the past and reschedule them again. Everyone. But the people that do know their God, they are the only ones who will be strong and do what is right. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.